Welcome to Elite Expert Insider Podcast, where we will inspire, motivate, and educate entrepreneurs, innovators, and growth seekers. Brought to you by Elite Online Publishing, making the best and brightest in the industry number one best selling authors. 80% of people say they want to write a book. We're assuming that's the same for you. If so, contact us at www.eliteonlinepublishing.com and make your book a reality. Hey, it's Melanie Johnson along with Jen Foster again. Thanks for stopping by to see us and hear us on our podcast. Um, remember to subscribe to this podcast and leave us a review. We would love to hear from you because we're always trying to motivate you, to inspire you, to educate you, and make you more successful. So we bring things to you every week to do that, and we hope that we're successful with that. So today, you know, Jen and I all str- struggle with, we've all gone through different things, um, whether it's divorce, whether it may be a death, maybe you've lost a job, maybe you've had an accident or you're fighting a health thing. And it's like, how do you get beyond those challenges? How do you leave all that stuff behind so you can really get to your life's potential and reach the success that you are meant to be? So today we have a special guest, Cody uh, Burns, and he is an expert at this. He's had his own life experiences, and he's going to teach us today how to leave all that behind, leave all the emotional baggage behind, and get to where you want to be. Don't live in defeat, but live in success, and he's going to give us the tools to do that today. Thanks for coming by, uh, Cody. Thank you so much for having me. Glad to be here. Great. Well, first of all, Cody, tell us a little bit about yourself, um, your background, and how you got to be the successful best-selling author. (laughs) <laughs> well, I started at a my goodness. Well, I'm originally from Indiana. I now live in Tampa, Florida. Uh, but growing up in Indiana, I was a very creative young man, as my mom would put it. Um, I fell in love with uh, juggling, entertaining at a very young age. And I was very involved in church. And so eventually, after graduating high school, I got my pastoral credentials and became a children's pastor. And at the same time, I got to travel the country and do a lot of uh, events whether it be speaking to children. I also got to do some circus events with my juggling. Uh, life was just going great. And so, you know, my, my journey um, gr- coming to that point was, was amazing. And then my life drastically changed in 2013 while I was stopped at a red light on the highway. And so wow. I didn't know if you want me to break into that. Yeah. <laughs> That's a whole nother story. Well, give us the quick version of that so um, people kind of know. I mean, I know that you were burned over 40% of your body from that accident. Yeah, I was, well, here's, I was stopped at a red light on the highway and I was rear-ended by a refrigerator box truck that was not going to stop. It was going 60, 65 miles per hour. On impact of the truck hitting my vehicle, it blew up into flames. Uh, When the first responders came to the scene, by the looks of it, they called it out as a fatality. And they'd already called the corner and everything, but somehow they saw my hand move and they changed their plans. They redirected me to a hospital in Evansville, Indiana, which is the southern part of the state. And then they uh, redirected me to Indianapolis, Indiana, where I was in the burn unit. I was in a full coma on life support for three weeks. I had severe burns, 40% of my body severely burned. Um, I had uh, third and fourth degree burns, which I never heard of a fourth degree burn. Basically burnt down to bone and muscle. I had broken vertebrae, everything that could have went wrong in the burn unit, it went wrong. My family definitely had a roller coaster ride. But after three weeks, I came to, and I spent a total of two and a half months in the burn unit and another six weeks going to an in-stay rehabilitation center, constantly being monitored by nurses and doctors. I had to relearn to walk, use my hands, use the restroom, all the basics. I had many, many surgeries. Uh, So my recovery from... Uh, May of 2013 really lasted me a full three years uh, yeah. just to get, get back to where I can somewhat live life independently again. Mm-hmm. Wow. And I'm sure that those three years were so challenging. I can't even imagine not just the hospital stays, but then all the rehabilitation and, and then dealing with all of the scars, right? <laughs> Absolutely. And not just the physical scars, but those emotional scars. And mm. so that, that was, in my opinion, the most difficult to recover from. Yeah. So how did you recover? What, and what did you, looking back now, um, that you've learned to, to keep using forward in your life that you used back then to get from that, um, those mental scars? Yeah. Well, you know, I was, real, I was 23 at the time. And so I was, you know, life was going great. 
Christian, trying to live life right. So obviously my faith was tested during this time. But I will say I was very blessed. I came from a good, strong community. My family, I had that support that was there to encourage me. But I definitely had my moments. I even encountered depression. You know, it was, it was very difficult. But through it all, I had to remind myself that I cannot change what had happened to me. The only thing I can change is what I do today and moving forward. And so I had a team of people, my family, church family, everyone was supporting me. And I think also seeing that it was encouraging people that, okay, Cody's still alive. There's something to this. And my family, what they would say on social media, and it was encouraging people. And so whenever I seen that it was, it was helping others, I was like, oh my gosh, it's helping me. And so it just encouraged me all the more because I knew that ultimately, you know, as a young boy, I knew I wanted to give hope to people. I, I, my vision was to travel the world and give hope to, to thousands. Now it's turned into millions. But, you know, through it all, it, it, that, that really stuck with me. And so I was like, you know what? Now's the time where I have to start practicing what I preach. And so, you know, life is always good. You can, you can talk it all, all day long, but when you actually encounter trauma and, and, and tragedy, it's a whole nother yeah. story. I love that you said it's, you stopped living in the what if really is what it was. Mm -hmm. It's like, I can't change what happened. So I think people get stuck in the, well, what if I would have just done this? Or what if it would have done this? Or they hadn't have done this. And then they get stuck in there and they can't move on and they're, they're stuck in that defeat. So I really like that. And then you saw the bigger purpose of, you know, my life is meaning beyond myself. Um, that's been like my big epiphany the last couple of days is beyond us. You know, everything is really beyond us. It's not just about us, right? There's this bigger picture of all the other people that you affected during that. Um, what do you tell people when they're going through something and they're wanting to move beyond this? And you've got some of this in your book. What do you tell them that they should be doing? Yeah, I mean, I kind of sum, sum it up into four steps. And obviously these steps can be long and more detailed in between, but I think it begins with embracing your current reality. And once again, understanding that you cannot change what happened, but you can change your today. And it's difficult. I mean, if you look at the 12 step process, you know, the first step of overcoming a problem is admitting that you have a problem. Right. And so it's kind of like in this situation, I have to do, okay, this is my reality. What can I do moving forward? So then I have to take control of my reality. Taking control involves getting that support system, taking those uh, steps that you need to overcome, to rise above, and then just trusting the process and being persistent and knowing that, you know, my recovery, it didn't, it didn't come overnight. And I had, to, I had to relax, take deep breaths and know and ultimately encourage myself and know that, okay, I'm going to get there. There is light at the end of this tunnel. And then number four, just be confidently you. Be confident in yourself. Be confident in the story that you have and the message and the value that you can give to others. I love that. I love that you talk about the support system because I think a lot of times, especially in this day and age, everyone thinks, oh, I can do it myself. I can do it. I, can, I have enough. You know, I can do it myself. But in reality, you do need that support. You, need, you do need to have that team of support, a system, so that you can not just be by yourself, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Well, and some people don't have that support system. So what do you tell people that are kind of loners or they don't have a family or not connected to their family or church? Um, where do they begin? Yes. And I, and I, tell, and I tell people this because I, I've had that. It's a, it's a very popular question. You know, I think ultimately us as individuals, we have to understand we are in control of our life. It all boils down to we, we make the decisions of what we want to do and what we want to happen. There are people in today's world, there's so much available to us. And I think us as individuals are put in that place to establish that good support system that we, that we need. We can find the, that good support system, whether if it's not your family, there's other people, there's groups out there, there is, there is tools, resources that you can grab a hold of. And so ultimately, there really, that can't be an excuse for us because yeah. in today's world, there is so much at our fingertips, reach out, grab a hold, and you're not alone. I think that's a powerful thing. You're not alone in your circumstance. Understand that, you know, in my, as a burn survivor, it really expanded my vision of seeing that, oh my goodness, there's all kinds of survivors. There's children, there's adults going to these burn conferences, immersing yourself in that right. environment. And I think it's powerful. Yeah, I think it kind of yeah. comes down to number four. What you said was Kurt with, uh, with courage and confidence, right? So if you can sit yeah. behind your computer or 
or stay home and complain about how you're always alone, or you can check out the groups on Facebook, check out the groups on Meetup, actually physically go and meet people at those conferences, or you know, thinking about the things that you're interested in, whether it's hiking or, or the different things that aren't related to the thing that you're upset about, right? The, the, the trial that you had to go through, but something else that you're interested in, and actually get out there and meet those people who can potentially become your friends and your support system. Absolutely. Any last thoughts that you can give us, uh, Cody, um, from your book for to help people out? Oh my goodness! Well, there's so many. Uh, you know, I always tell people, you know, I have I have scars, and whether it be physical or emotional, a scar in itself doesn't have to be a bad thing. A scar does become a bad thing when it limits our mobility in life, in our pursuit of accomplishing our goals and dreams. And I just want to encourage everyone to not allow what happened yesterday to limit what could happen today the good things, the blessings of today, move forward and know that there is a life of freedom, freedom that you can live and the hope that you can give to others. Look outside yourself once again. You know, my whole life, I don't live for myself. I live for the people around me. I want to make a true impact and I encourage everyone to do so. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank well, you. tell us where we can find you and people can get in touch with you. Yes, you can go to my website. It's Cody Burns. Go figure. The last name was very ironic, I will say. But it's, <laughs> it's Cody Burns, C-O-D-Y-B-Y-R-N-S dot com. Uh, expert, uh, let's see. I, yeah, Elite Expert Insider. It's, so it's CodyBurns.com slash Elite Expert Insider. I wanted to get that right. <laughs> Perfect. So do you have a bonus there for people and it's something special for it? There is information where they can get connected with me. Uh, and then also there is a link where they can get my book. Um, it's on Amazon, uh, whether it be ebook or printed. Perfect. Perfect. Well, we'll put that link up at the bottom of the YouTube video. And those who are listening, you just go to CodyBurns.com, B-Y-R-N-S. This is last yes. name. Thanks very much. So thanks for stopping by. And remember to subscribe to our podcast um, so you can be updated on all the cool guests that we have and uh, leave us a review. We'd love to hear from you. And if you're looking to become an author and have a book uh, published and become a number one bestseller, please contact us at EliteOnlinePublishing.com. Um, we'll be happy to help you there. Talk to you soon. Bye. If you'd like to create the most powerful advertising tool for your business, contact us at EliteOnlinePublishing.com, where we will help you create, publish, and make your book a number one bestseller, and show you how to get new leads and more revenue for your business. If you'd like to check us out on our Facebook page, we have a free book for you as our gift. Just go and click free book. Remember to subscribe and leave a comment for our podcast. We would love to hear from you.